Hey, what's going on internet? In this video, we're gonna talk about creating film credits. I hope everyone who's watching this video today is doing well. My name is Josh Noel and I'm from Sunduck Film. So some of you may know that I am a filmmaker, not just a motion graphic artist, but I also have a huge you know, desire and passion for making short films. And every time I make a short film, I always go in depth into the actual credits. I'm not a big fan of white text on a black background. To me, there's not much effort that goes into that. And I always like to just make credits that appeal to the style and mood of the film that we're producing. There's so many different ways you can create credits to fit the style and mood of your own film. But this video is gonna be very more generic around creating the mood and style and on top of creating scrolling text properly inside of After Effects. So without wasting more time, let's go ahead and jump into this video and let's get started. All right, so we got After Effects ready to go and this is kind of what we're going for. And plenty of techniques to talk about in this tutorial, but first let's talk about the most important thing, which is creating the credits. So here we are in our tutorial composition. The only thing we have in here is a background. We'll talk about that a little bit, but let's talk about the important part, which is designing the credits. So instead of just grabbing the text title tool right off the start and you know adding titles, what I like to do for organization and for ease of use for later, if I need to change out you know credits later, what I like to do is go ahead and create another composition and create a new composition. And this time I like to keep it the width of the composition, but increase the height, you know, depending on the length of how many credits I have to give. So I think 5,000 pixels is way more than enough. So we'll just go with that and we can rename this composition to credits and click OK. So now this is where we're going to put our credits. And as you can see, we kind of have like this nice long list of area to put in credits. I'll talk a little bit why we're doing it this way in a second. But what we can do here is we need to create two columns. When you're doing scrolling text, you need to create two columns, one for the role and one for the you know credits. So We'll go ahead and do the credits first. So what I was just doing before you get started with After Effects is that you kind of have a notepad of all the credits that you need to give and you just copy that and we come over here, just click a point or click a, you know, in our composition and we'll just paste our credits in here and you know, the format will be pretty much bad. So that's why we're going to talk about some typography here in this tutorial and with all our, you know, credits in here, what I was just doing, I want to put this on the right side. So I'll align the paragraph to the left align. So boom, it's to be on the left side of our composition. And depending on the style and mood you're going for, the typeface is going to play a big role into the mood of your credits. So in my case, I'm just going to use Gotham, which is a nice uh, sans serif typeface, and I'm going to keep it at, say, light. And we can do all caps, which is right here in the character window. And then, of course, we might need to, you know, make this a little bit smaller. And we can decrease the leading by a little bit. That looks fine. And then what we need to do is go to our tutorial composition and we'll bring in this composition back into our main comp. And then we'll just hit PR and keyboard for position and we can bring down the Y position here. So as you can see, we're starting to create scrolling credits. And you know, this is how we're gonna animate it. And if everything looks good as far as spacing goes, we're good to go. We'll work on the color in a second. So next, what we wanna do is take this, you know, name column and we wanna go to edit, duplicate, and we'll just move it over to the other side. Then we'll come here to the paragraph window and right align it. And then we'll move this over here. And this is where we're going to start putting out the roles. So from here, I can easily just, you know, retype things out, hit enter on my keyboard. And those spacings are going to line exactly where they need to be. So now if our credits are lined up to where it needs to be, and what I'm just doing with one of the sides is to make it a little bit more contrasty. So perhaps I'll take my roll side and I'll set it from the light typeface to a bold which is a little bit thicker and a little bit more distinctive of what we're doing. Now, of course, since my background and my main composition is going to be light, I will obviously want the titles to be a little bit darker, so I can easily change the colors of everything and quickly just do that. And if you're working with dark titles, you can just click on the transparency grid and boom, you can see your titles a little bit easier. So now that we have the design and layout ready to go, let's jump back over to our main composition and let's talk about animating this. So we talked about hitting PR and keyboard for position and you can easily use the Y position here to animate it up and down. So obviously that's what we want to do is just bring our first, you know, line just underneath our composition and add a keyframe for position. This is where you're going to want to move forward in time to, you know, a decent length. So depending on how long your credits are, it's going to depend on, you know, where this last keyframe is going to go, but I'll say 15 seconds in my case, and I'm just going to have this scroll up and it go all the way up if you want it to. And now we'll have a scrolling, you know, animation with our, you know, credits and that looks pretty cool. And you know, everything looks good. So the real reason why we did it in another composition for two reasons. One was the easy organization of just being able to see all the, you know, titles all at once. And if we need to make any corrections, we can easily just locate that easily. And the other thing I like to do is talk about maybe adding, you know, titles or other elements that will not be in this clean text block. So for example, I might want to add say like a logo, right? 
you know, obviously I can add that logo in there, whatever, say Sunduck, doesn't really matter. And now that logo is automatically going to animate with our credits. And then, so that's why I put the credits in a separate composition. And that's essentially how you can create scrolling, you know, credits inside of After Effects in a nice professional format. Now, let's talk about actually creating a cool credit scene that goes with the style and mood of your project. So, so what I like to do typically in some cases is start with the background. As you can see, I already have a background in here. This is simply a texture that I just did a quick search up for and downloaded it and it had the right, you know, sort of feel. It's nothing over the top. And you know, think about, you know, if you're gonna add a background, think about what type of background is gonna represent in your film if that's what you're going for. Since the title of our film is named Memories, it kind of has like a lighthearted feel to it. And I wanna add, you know, go to Effect Blur, Gaussian Blur, and kind of blur out the background a little bit, make it more into say a gradient rather than a textured background. And you know, this is an example of using an effect to match the style of your film. So these are things that you should think about when you're building out your credits. So I want to talk about using a handful of other elements to enhance your credits and to take it to the next level. And you know, depending on your project, hopefully you can use a handful of these techniques. So first thing I want to do is manipulate the color here because there's really not much stand out here. So what I'm going to do, go to layer, new adjustment layer. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the effects and presets window and I'm going to type in vignette. And I'm going to grab CC vignette and bring it to our adjustment layer. And I can increase the angle of view by a little bit, just kind of make the center a little bit brighter. But let's come over here and go to Effect Color Correction Curves. And let's create just a little bit of contrast because this is looking a little bit flat. So we can create an S curve with our RGB. And this, you know, creates just that little bit more contrast in here. Makes the center a little bit brighter. And I wouldn't mind going, say, to the, you know, the blue channel and kind of increasing this by a little bit. Kind of give it like a blue overlay. Just a little touch there. And then go to Effect Color Correction Tint. And then bring down the white tint by a little bit. Just kind of keep some of that blue in there, but not too much. So that helps just by a touch. Then maybe we'll go to like the red channel and just bring that down by a little bit. And, you know, now you get a little bit of that color in there. All right. So let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer. And we'll call this noise. And anytime I do motion graphics, I always apply this effect because, you know, when you're blending motion graphics with video, you got to keep in mind that video usually has noise to it and motion graphics do not. So what you want to do is go to effect noise and grain and you want to add noise and just adding like a little bit of noise helps with like 5%. And this will kind of make it a little bit more, you know, filmic and just uncheck use color noise is good. Then I want to create another adjustment layer and I'm going to call it uh, optics. Then I'm going to go to effect distort and I'm going to grab uh, optics compensation, increase this field of view by a touch and check on reverse lens distortion and this will give it just a little bit of a unique feel to the credits to kind of kind of like a warp bothering perspective kind of kind of what our film was about so just and this is just another example of using an effect to help represent your story and I want to create one more adjustment layer and this is going to transition on our credit so and what makes sense here is kind of using a blur there's a handful of different like ways you could bring on your initial credits but doing like a camera lens blur is a good example in our case to just reveal on our credit so for example, I can have this pumped up kind of far, like the blur radius could be up high and I check on repeat edge pixels and just add a keyframe for blur radius, bring it down by a little bit and we'll set it down to zero. And one thing that I value in a lot of my other tutorials is using third party assets to help enhance the mood, the style, and even the overall production value of your motion graphics. And this can be expanded onto any project that you're working for. So for example, here I have one of the best packs for After Effects Adobe Premiere and any other editor that you can use which is called Cine Punch, which has over 8,000 assets, including, you know, lens flares, dust, tons of filmmaking effects, bokeh, light leaks, sound effects, transitions for Adobe Premiere, and so much more. This is like the ultimate pack. But for example, you know, if you have like a lens flare, you can bring in something, say, from Cine Punch here if you have this pack. And what I can do is find like a lens flare within this pack that I like. And this is a really cool lens flare. It has a lot of bokeh in it. And I could bring this into After Effects just by quickly previewing it. And when it's loaded in here, I could bring it into our timeline. Set the blend mode to screen, hit S on keyboard for scale, scale it down. And now we have some, you know, nice bokeh within our composition. And that looks really cool. And I can always go to color correction tint and just make it black and white to help maybe fit the palette of our film. And then we can also say bring in like a fog element in here. These are just things that you could think about what assets work perfectly for your project. and. And this has a lot more depth and style into our credits. What's cool about this, this only took us about 10 minutes to do, where obviously a black and white screen would take about a couple of minutes to do, but this puts a lot more effort and raises the overall production value of your projects. So that's how you can create some really cool film credits inside of After Effects. 
And of course, you should be able to apply some of these techniques to Adobe Premiere Pro if you don't want to use After Effects. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creative.